My name is Michael van der Linden. I'm 28 years old. I'm a severe hemophilia A patient. Um, I was diagnosed when I was seven months old. Um, and it was a spontaneous mutation, so I wasn't the first in my family, and I hope to be the last, of course. Hemophilia is a rare disease, so if you've never been in touch with it, you might have heard of it, you know, a bleeder's disease or something like that. And, and often if people don't have a, uh, an, an, an association with hemophilia, there, they might say, you know, oh, uh, so if you cut yourself, you bleed to death. Uh, so that's their, you know, that's a lot. That's a reaction that you often hear. It had a very, very great impact uh, in our li life. We never heard about this disease. Never heard about it. So everything was new, and uh, we were very shocked about it. Every time when he uh, he was a little child and he fell. We had to go to the hospital. Between his first birthday and about his sixth birthday, we had to go daily to the hospital. It had a very great impact because the hospital was uh, 30 kilometers away from our home and it took almost four hours to inject him. So it was it was like a job. For me, it was like a job. I could not work at that time because it took too much time to uh, to, to have the treatment with Michael. Hemophilia to me is like brushing my teeth. And uh, I almost mean that literally. So when I, uh, I, I get up, I go and take a shower, I do my hair, I brush my teeth, I go down, I take my breakfast and then I infuse. Because I infuse prophylactic, prophylactically. Um, it means that, you know, I get to do that every day. I go through life as any normal person would, but I have hemophilia, so I, I need to take that into back of my mind. And sometimes that comes up, and sometimes you have to take extra action or you have to think about something. I can do basically everything, right? But not everything is sort of smart, the smart thing to do. When you uh, have hemophilia and you treat your, your hemophilia, you can develop what we call an inhibitor. So that means that actually your body creates an, an, a reaction to, against the treatment so that it actually breaks down the treatment really fast and it sort of is something similar as to the treatment not working. When I was younger, I, I had an inhibitor and, and having an inhibitor uh, you know, has a big impact on, on, on the way you, tr you manage and the way you treat your, your, your hemophilia. Um, I know some friends that have an inhibitor even now and, and it's, 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 it, it, it's like having no treatment available. It's, it's a little bit the same, you know, it doesn't work. And um, I still have actually joint issues that relate back to that inhibitor now. Together with my doctor, you, you make a, a management plan for yourself to, to make sure that you actually don't experience any problems. And we are very, uh, we have a very good treatable disease that, that as long as you make a good treatment plan for yourself and, and, and you stick to that, you, sh you, you don't actually experience any big bleed. If you have hemophilia, you experience bleeds. Um, but there is a big difference in the type of bleeds that you need to take action on. If, if you experience a, a, a muscle bleed, you, you're going to have you know, a, a big bleed in, in your muscle and that provides a, a big problem because you need to make sure that you don't use the muscle, that you, you know, treat it really well because it takes some time to actually get rid of that. The impact of that is much bigger on your daily life as well. The same goes for joint bleed, so that means that you know you, you actually uh, get blood into the joint, and, and, and as you might imagine, you know a joint is a very you know very tiny tight space, and then you get it's full of blood, so you you are actually not able to move your joint anymore, and um, that the impact of that bleed is also much bigger because you know blood contains iron and. Iron damage damages actually the joint, so your body has to get rid of that. So that takes time, and it actually can have a long-term effect as well. I try not to 
worry too much about what's going to happen in the long term in terms of my hemophilia because you don't know what's going to happen. I know that I have some issues with my ankle and that I have some issues with my elbow, you know, and they, they might, you know, become worse over time, they might not, so you don't know. So I try to go about life as is and I try to do what I can and not and, and don't linger too much on what I cannot do. And that's for me a sort of motto in life.